Very interesting for me to find out that Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah was discussing these points around what to focus on and what to prioritize and this is what we study in modern time management and goal setting and achievement. So he categorized it into the following categories, things which are important and urgent, things or ideas or thoughts that are important but not urgent, things which are not important but urgent, and things which are not important and not urgent, right? And he mentioned that the, the ones that give confusions are the ones that are important but not urgent, versus things that are not important but urgent, right? Let me repeat that. Things that are important but not urgent versus things that are not important but urgent, right? And many people start preferring not important and not urgent, except the ones who Allah have mercy upon. So this is something to be very careful about, right? And then he brings a very interesting principle that is a very foundational principle of this deen, the religion of Islam. And he gives that principle was that we always give precedence to the greater benefit, right? So if we have two benefits, one is a greater benefit and one is a lesser benefit, if we have to take one, we'll always go for the greater benefit. We'll always secure the greater benefit. And if we have two evils, we would always prefer the lesser evil, right? And this requires fiqh, this requires understanding, this requires inspiration. That is why we are so dependent on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directing our affairs and managing our affairs and giving us the right guidance. So we should realize this dependence and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this guidance. And at the same time, to use knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us in his book and in the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Some examples could be that if you have a condition at home, right? So there many times what happened is that someone is not listening or someone is not doing the right thing. Would you just expel them? Would you just break the home, right? And what would happen is if that were to be done, greater harms were to befall the family and so on and so forth. And we have talked about many different things in our earlier episodes around a strategy and finding the right approach to dealing with situations. So this is something to keep in mind. Always prioritize the bigger benefit the greater good and always go for the lower evil if you have to choose one. Then he mentions uh, from a perspective of different ideas and different thoughts to prioritize. He says the ones that are deserving of high importance are the ones that are related to reflecting and pondering upon the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which would lead to understanding what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down. And that is the primary purpose of us to receive the book, the revolution, the, the speech of Allah is to reflect and to understand. The goal is to implement it, the goal is to internalize it and to make it part of our life. Many of us have really, really left that book away and have adopted other form of modern content and are prioritizing that over the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the ones that do read it have become content with mere reading and do not ponder, do not understand, and do not act upon it, and do not account themselves of how much they are acting by it. So now, this is the month of Ramadan. The, way, the time that we release this podcast is the first week of Ramadan, so most of you will be listening to it during the Ramadan. So it's a special time, right? As we are focused on what we are putting into our bodies, and, that, and when we eat and when we drink, and when we do not eat and when we do not drink, it's also a great time to think, where we are spending our mental resources. And as it is the month of Quran, how we are using it. Is it just mere reading? Is it no reading? Is it mere reading? Is it understanding? And is it a real focus and plan to implement it and to hold ourselves accountable on how we are implementing it? The second thing he mentions is basically reflecting on the signs in the creation of Allah. Reflecting on the signs and bounties of Allah. And this will, as one focuses on the signs, as well as the bounties that one enjoys from Allah, this will increase one in knowledge about Allah and will increase the love of Allah and will increase hope and fear in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we continue our thoughts like this, along with remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not by just by our tongue, but also engaging in our hearts, it will really dye our heart, fully color our heart, by the knowledge and love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.
And that is the goal of a sound heart. Then the next thing he mentioned is to have the thoughts and ideas around reflecting on the deficiency of our soul, the, the diseases of our soul, the different diseases that we hold, the different attributes, the negative attributes that we hold, and to reflect upon what is important and what is obligation and what is the most important thing for the current time, i.e. being in the moment, focusing on what is required of me now. So he mentions a very uh, amazing parable here that time is like sword. Either you cut it off or it will cut you. Meaning you spend it well, right? And that's the right usage of time or basically time passes and it takes away from your life. So another way of thinking about it is like, let's say if you're uh, playing a sport like soccer or basketball or football, right? These are time-bounded games. So each minute, each second counts. Either you're scoring and making progress towards your opponent or they are making progress towards you, right? The interesting thing there is that the time is known. You know how much time is remaining and you're making full use of that time, right? But when it comes to life, the time is unknown. So we have to make each day count. So think about it. For any type of goal that you have, either you're using time for you or against you. Similar example could be thought about like if you, if you have a very powerful car and you have a full tank of gas or full tank of petrol, now you have to use that wisely. Because once the petrol runs out and you did not use the car wisely, the engine was on and it was running and the petrol was being consumed, but you were not able to get to where you wanted to get. Now, another angle of that is to realize not to be scared of ideas and thoughts, right? Some people can be very consumed by how can I have this evil idea and evil thought in my mind? So this is something to think about, not to basically get too worried and anxious about this because that is something that you did not have a control about, right? And this is something the companions of the Prophet ﷺ also mentioned to the Prophet ﷺ that sometimes ideas or thoughts may come to them, they would never consider speaking about it, right? Because of their shyness and because of how bad the thought was. And the Prophet ﷺ then explained it to them, right? That this is something from the signs of Iman, that this is something that the shaitan is distracting them with. So if it passes by you, that is not necessarily a dangerous thing, right? That is not necessarily a dangerous thing. But to think about it, it's something that's passing by, just like a rotten apple on the side of the street. You do not have to keep staring at it. You do not have to smell it. And obviously, you do not have to taste it. So continuing on, he mentions the topic of uh, two types of nafs, right? The one that incites to good, the one that incites towards things and ideas that will gain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the opposite that will incite you towards um, the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the angel supports the side, the nafs that gives us push towards good deeds, towards the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the shaitan moves us towards the one that says, be away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, be disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this battle will continue. This battle will continue. And the only way to win this battle is the one to be patient with himself. And then one to be patient with the enemy, which is the shaitan and the desires and the false desires. And then one to be guarding the entry points, right? The thoughts. And last time we talked about the sight, what we look at, and, and likewise what we hear, what we read, what we see. All these things, as one guards these thoughts and guards his eyesight, his heart, his mind, this is how one can be successful. And this is the only way. Now at the same time, lastly, he brings up a very important point, And that is the other extreme side of it. Right? So it's important for us to make space for good ideas and good thoughts so that we can think about higher things, things more beneficial to us and to get rid of the lowly things. Right? The other extreme here is that some people go on the other extreme of cleansing the heart of everything. So they, they're like, I don't want any thoughts and I want complete silence and I don't want to do anything but the worldly matters. And that is also wrong because... This is how shaitan will busy one with something that is not important and put into false ideas. Rather, one should be cleansing the heart, right? So if you go back to the example of the smartphone, if it's acting slow and it's, if the storage is full, you would cleanse it and then you would put beneficial apps on it. 
And likewise, he mentioned the beneficial things are for one to be concerned about understanding what the deen of Allah is about. How is, has Allah defined success? What does Allah want from us? And then to focus on and to think and to plan on how one can implement it in his life, his life of his family, as well as the people around us. How can this be uh, given as a knowledge and facilitated for people to implement it? Right, and that is the most beneficial thing. So, to to be avoid to be concerned about this other extreme in which one does not want anything to do with the dunya, and one just wants to have a complete empty mind. This emptiness is not what is desired. <laughs> Da 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 da